What's up everyone, Ed Ballou coming at you with some more tips and tricks on the Helium network, answering the question that plagues us all, why am I earning so low, sad face? We ask that again and again and again, and it's a good question. It invites us to understand a little bit more about how earnings work. So, your first thing is if you don't have a Helium device at all, that's probably why your earnings are low. In fact, they're non-existent because you don't have one. All right. So, you, the first thing you can do is go get yourself a miner. So, where do you get one? Well, you got a rack miner from Calchip. You go to Helium's website, you can follow the links, all that kind of stuff, and order one from Calchip. Also, there are some third-party manufacturers that just came online. If you haven't been following this for a while, uh, you know that, or you wouldn't know that last December they made some changes to restrict the number of third-party manufacturers. Why? Because people were gaming the system. Boo! And that affected us all. So, Helium made a change that restricts the number of third-party uh, manufacturers, and that will help us all. So, yay! Unfortunately, it had some ramifications that have caused some issues to ripple through the, the system such that we have to wait for some miners here in the next couple months. But I think that, that probably by the time you're watching this video, that will be a, a, a non-starter at all, a non-issue. So, here are some other third-party manufacturers that are coming online. Nebra, they make both an indoor and an outdoor unit. Um, check them out. I believe that they're going to be shipping, I think, mid-March, beginning of March, something like that. Uh, other ones are Synchrobit and I believe Bobcat, I think, is another one. If you think I'm wrong or you know better or something like that, put it in the comments so everybody knows. Also, uh, so all those uh, manufacturers that I just mentioned, Calchip, Nebra, Synchrobit, Bobcat, uh, those devices will come at a cost and at an investment. Uh, so you're going to have to fork over the dough to, to pay for one of those. One of the other providers that uh, I really like that I've, I've actually used myself is Emirate. I wanted a no cost entry into crypto because I had, had no idea what I was doing uh, in the crypto space. So I went to Emirate and said, yeah, sign me up. I want to be one of your, one of your hosts. And so they provide the hotspot for free. They support it for free. They ship it to you for free. If you don't like it, you can ship it back for free. If you need a new hotspot sent to you for another location, that's free too. Everything's free. It's pretty cool. The, uh, the only catch, if you want to say it that way, is you are a host. So they are basically renting space from you, uh, internet and power. And uh, there's a there's a ratio in there that they that they provide you uh, a percentage of of, of uh, what you make from your miner back to you, as as the um, equal uh, compensation in that partnership. So check those out if you will. All right. So uh, why am I earning so low? If you are a lone wolf, that means there's nobody around you. What is a lone wolf? Well, we'll get to that over the course of this video. But basically, there's nobody around you, so you are by yourself. Nobody understands crypto like you do, even if you're a skeptic, and also there's no devices near you at all, say if you live in the middle of nowhere. You can still have one of these. So, how much will you make? Well, as long as you're connected to the internet, and you have power, and you're operating this, this device, Right now, at least over the last month, I have a lone wolf hotspot that's making about 10 HNT. And I put a big asterisk on, on that. We'll get to that later about when I s say anything about helium tokens and I give you an actual amount. We'll talk about that later. So lone wolves, they're by themselves. They don't make much. They do make a little bit. So you can, you can um, kind of bank on that. Next part is, well, we got to talk about coverage. Okay, are you providing coverage? Now, coverage works in a couple ways in that uh, you can be the challengee and you can be the challenger. Okay, so what we will talk about as being the challengee is like, okay, let's say there's two hotspots, A and B, and I'm A and another person is B. Okay, so as A, if I'm the challengee, that means I'm being challenged to emit a signal and see who else can hear me. Okay, if I am the challenger, then I would be challenging someone else. So B can challenge me and I'd be the challengee, but if 
I as A challenge B, then B would, I would be the challenger and B would be the challengee. Okay? And that just means that when there's a challenge involved, it says, hey, I want you to prove your signal that you're, you're offering coverage or that you can transmit. And so um, what that does is sends a, a, a transmission through your antenna and then propagates through the airwaves and hopefully is received by other devices. If that is received by another device, then that's the most awesome thing in mining helium tokens is that there's been a witness involved. Right? When they're investigating a crime, that's they use witnesses, right? That's the it's as true as it can get. Okay? So witnesses are your key to the most helium tokens you can make. Okay? There is a limit to the effectiveness of, of witnessing, and that's about if you get to about I think about five witnesses, you can have way more than that, but the return on investments as far as getting witnesses is, is pretty low as you, as you cross that barrier. That three to five barrier uh, is kind of the sweet zone. I was making a bunch as a, uh, in that, uh, I think it was like four witnesses. I was making about 600 tokens a month with another hotspot of mine. Again, big asterisk on that, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so witnessing is a great thing. You get a lot of tokens for that. Okay, so say you just got your hotspot. You're like, I don't know what to do with this. I, I got it, I plugged it in. Why am I not, why am I not making anything? Well, do you have a green light? Because if you don't have a green light, that means you don't have your internet connection set up. Okay, if you have a green light, great. That's a good sign that everything is working as it's supposed to, at least from the device's perspective. Now, I have run into a problem one time where I had a green light, but it wasn't syncing, okay? So what does syncing mean? It's a blockchain term that means it's catching up to wherever the network is. Uh, it's, a, it's an element used for the integrity of the network. And if I'm wrong, you can drop more comments in the, in the comments below and tell me how wrong I am. <laughs> But in general, the blockchain is a good thing. It takes some data to catch up to where everything is on the network. And once you caught up to the blockchain, then you can start earn your earnings, okay? Now you will notice that sometimes it falls a little bit behind in the blockchain. That's not a bad thing. If you're like at 99.9%, .9%, you're good. You don't need to worry if you're 300 blocks behind in the blockchain. That happens naturally, even like, Oh geez, 700 to 1,000 blocks behind the blockchain, I'm pretty sure you're okay. Um, it might even be that if you're above 95%, you're okay. I don't know what the official number is. Again, if you know, drop it in the comments, thanks. All right, so syncing. Now, I did notice that when there was a problem during syncing, so I, I had my green light and I had it plugged in and it should have been catching up to the blockchain, but it wasn't. So I was using the Helium Explorer, which we'll talk about next and I'll show a little bit as well, is that it wasn't catching up to the blockchain at all. The number wasn't moving. It was like 10,000 blocks behind the blockchain and it kept at that 10,000 mark. And so because it wasn't moving forward, I made a choice to, okay, I'm gonna reboot this and see what happens, okay? So I unplugged it, the power from the unit for about 30 seconds to a minute and then plugged it back in and then just left it alone. And lo and behold, it started catching up to the blockchain after about 30 minutes. I checked it again and it was, it was slowly, slowly catching up. As far as I understand that that catching up to the blockchain can take a few hours to even a couple of days dependent on your internet connection. So beware of that. Again, that all delays your earnings. It doesn't, doesn't explain why your earnings might be low unless you just started out, which just give it time, be patient. Okay. All right, next, let's talk about the Helium Explorer and I'm gonna go kind of old school at least a little bit is I'm gonna talk about um, this using uh, my tablet here. And this is the Helium Explorer and you can zoom in to various spots on, on uh, all over the world and see where it's at, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in to the uh, United States here, which is where I'm located and I'm not gonna zoom in on my particular hotspot, but we can just pick any one of these. Um, so I'm gonna pick this, this lone wolf in the middle of Iowa here. Well, maybe we'll pick something in Des Moines. It doesn't matter. Okay, 
So I'm going to click on view hotspot details. So if you are a virtual white gazelle, congratulations, you're being talked about on my YouTube channel. <laughs> okay, so virtual white gazelle has, uh, you can see that it's been making some helium tokens, not too many. So what's going on here? Well, we can find out. It's I, right away. I would say that that's acting like a lone wolf. Okay, so let's go through the little. This is a great little meter for judging where you're at in your in your earnings. So blockchain sync. It's fully synced. That's good. That's good. Hotspot is online. Great. Hotspot issued a challenge 185 blocks ago. Wonderful. Hotspot last participated in a challenge. 161 blocks ago. Yeah, it's great. So it's it's up and running. The biggest problem for them is they haven't witnessed a challenge yet. So there and the hotspot has no witnesses. So nobody can prove that this thing is providing services. And if you zoom in here, let me get this on camera here. If you zoom in here, you can see this purple dot. Let's see if I can get it in there. Yep, the purple dot in there is showing that there are no witnesses and if you were able to click around in this map and tap on all the other hotspots you might see that there's a, an act of a witness in there and so remember we talked about witnesses being that they they can provide the proof of your coverage okay so let's zoom in here so here's here's the other uh, earnings so each of those POC receipts is talking about a challenge that was done and if it was a successful challenge or not then it would follow up with that mining reward up there that you see and that's in orange that means this person got paid virtual white gazelle the owner of it got paid also one other handy dandy thing in here is if you scroll back up you'll see that there are nearby hotspots so those distances 2.6 kilometers three kilometers even the stock antenna should reach those in fact there's been some cases of stock antennas reaching over 30 some kilometers um, but for me, I, I didn't have that luck. I had to put out a, uh, an antenna, which I'll talk about in a little bit, to, to communicate over that distance. Okay, so that takes care of Helium Explorer. Uh, there's a lot to go in, in there. You can um, look at the signal strength in there. You can see who's been witnessing who. It's, it's a very good tool for di diagnosing the answer to why am I earning so low, sad face. Okay, next. I would highly recommend the POC discussion uh, in the Helium Discord. If you're an Emirate host, you can check out their uh, Discord as well. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, avenues for asking questions and just learning with a community uh, that's, that's doing this as well. Um, you can check out, I mean, YouTube, Google, all those things uh, for information and read Helium's website too if you need to break back down those challenge, witness, proof of challenge, all, all or proof of, proof of coverage, excuse me, um, all those terms you can, you can get into. Okay, so again, I got, all, I got my hotspot, it's plugged in, I got my internet. Why am I earning so low? I ask it very often, well, it, much less of late now that I understand a lot more. But this can be a really tough question to ask for the, for the newbies that just get their device. Okay, number one thing that you can consider is elevation. Getting above a roof line or, or getting into your attic or something as high as you can is in your best interest. Why? Because there's so much stuff at the ground level, hills, trees, other houses, all that kind of stuff that, that makes your signal not as strong. So the higher you have it, the better. Okay. Simple thing is that your elevation is too low in regards to the question, why am I earning so low? Next, indoor outdoor. And this was my problem is I had it inside for about two weeks. And then I started looking at the Helium Explorer and noticed that there was one spot that was like one kilometer or one mile from me and I still couldn't communicate it. So I moved it from one window to the closest window to that hotspot and it still wouldn't communicate with that, that hotspot. So I was really frustrated. Okay, well, more information now. So I got 
an antenna. I went and ordered an antenna, a bigger antenna, and I still put it in the window because I wasn't ready to just commit to putting it on my roof just yet. Got the antenna, had it in my window for a couple, for a, I think a week, and nothing. No results, no witnessing. It, it was not, um, it was not a profitable experience at that point. So I moved it outdoors. And as soon as I did that, my earnings went from like whatever it was that, you know, being a lone wolf, the, the 10 tokens, to hundreds of tokens a month. So in a day, it would be in that, oh, I don't know, 10 tokens a month, or sorry, 10 tokens a day, 20 tokens a day is what I was getting at that point. Again, big asterisk on, on those on those token amounts, those will change, which we'll get to in a, in a little bit. All right, so going outdoor, I had an, uh, a third-party antenna. I had it, the, uh, at that time I had my hotspot outside. I put it in a little enclosure on the same mast as my over-the-air television antenna, and then my earnings went up through the, through the roof. So that was the simplest thing I did, was moving outdoor. Now, do you need to have your hotspot outdoor? No. You don't. If you have a third-party antenna with a with a so non-stock antenna with a um, cable, an appropriate cable to match it. Now I was concerned about the wet, ultimate how the weather would would um, if it would hurt the device or not. So though, eventually I moved my hotspot back inside, but for a time it wasn't an enclosure, and, and you can see the pictures in previous videos. Okay, so. Next part is your antenna. Maybe your antenna is just not that great. Maybe you need a, a newer antenna. Even if you're inside, um, might, you might want to consider upgrading your antenna to get to that next next uh, device. Uh, moving placement in the window, that kind of thing. I've he even heard that some windows have a, a film covering that actually prevents the signal from getting through. So that might be another argument for going out, outside. And I, I don't have, I didn't, do any experiments with my hotspot outside on the stock antenna. I just did the, the, the big upgrade and um, it was very well worth my, my investment. So, um, and in fact, in that, I was able to pay for the antenna in the first month that I bought the antenna and the cable. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're looking at, oh, should I really pay for this upgrade? So. That's the antenna. All right, so you've done everything. You have a great physical setup. You've done what everybody has talked about up until this point, and you're still asking, why am I earning so low? Sad face. All right, let's go through the, those problems. Think of this as like an exercise that you run through when you're, when you're checking things about your earnings being lower. So look at your light status. Is it green? If it's green, great. If you haven't, if you've been mining, uh, what's my my general rule? Oh, I'll get to that in a second. Um, the light status should be green, and that means you're you're connected to the internet, so you should be all right. At least there's a connection between the the hotspot and your wireless router or your internet. Okay. All right. Is it synced? We talked about that earlier. Remember, I talked about. Oh, it was wasn't uh, caught up to the blockchain yet. So if it started falling behind, maybe your internet went out for a little bit. Maybe your it went out overnight while you were sleeping, and all of a sudden it's back. But it's taken some time to catch back up to the blockchain. That might be a reason why your earnings are are, are lower for a for a bit, or you lost internet, or or there's a power outage. Those things can affect your earnings. So check check for that. If it's fully synced, you're good. All right, one other thing that, that I actually got some questions uh, about in my last video was um, can, I, can, I, can I put multiple lo uh, hotspots in the same location? No. No, you're going to invalidate your own witnesses if they're really too close. And even if on, they're on the edge, you might run into another problem that, that it was actually a, a mechanic that they put into the Helium network to encourage uh, these, these hotspots to spread out. Because it would make no sense to have two cell phone towers or two over-the-air antennas in the same location provide a, a providing omnidirectional service. That would be, I mean, it's a little redundant, but the idea is you want overlapping redundancy from multiple different areas, okay? 
So what they did with this mechanic is it's a density uh, influencer. Density influencer. So what happens is, is let's say that you're on the fringe of that 300 meters that you have to that you have to space the the hot spots out by. If you're if they're still close enough, let's say that there's only two hot spots in this example. What happens is if both of you are making 100 tokens a month normally, then there's a density calculator that if you're too close, the density uh, calculator kicks in and removes a portion of your proceeds and actually prevents you from getting the maximum earnings that you could get. So I think if it's just one other hotspot and you, then it would go to 90% of earnings for both of you. So there's 10% that you both are missing out on. So you need to spread them out as that will affect you. They haven't added that as a, a notification or, or a visual thing in the Helium Explorer yet. I, I believe that they were going to uh, soon. So you'll want to check for the density, it, it, like on the Helium Explorer, zoom into your area. And this can change. Keep in mind this network is growing and your ma neighbor may not even heard about it from you, but they found out from another friend and they're like, oh cool, I'm going to put one at my house. Reali not, not realizing that you also were providing services and then all of a sudden you both are conflicting about coverage and so it's hurting both of your earnings. So keep checking the Helium Explorer to make sure if there's new hotspots coming online in your area. And if that happens, then you'll want to talk to them as soon as that comes on and work it out or, or just accept that that's going to happen and that's your earnings. All right, so next thing is reboot there's a lot of people who will like want to reboot that that hotspot all the time and that's just not how it's intended to work now a, a simple rule that i at least i've come up with is to uh, suggest if you're going to consider doing a reboot your earnings would probably you would want you want to check to make sure that you have a green light first but if your earnings are about 50% 50, 50 or lower of what you normally make, then you'll want to, you'll want to um, consider rebooting at that point, okay? It's an occasional reboot is not gonna hurt it. Uh, I would recommend the 30 seconds to a minute before you repower the device. Um, but there was one instance where I, pow I did a power cycle and my earnings came back and they really went well. It kind of went nuts there for a bit, which will lead into my next point. Um, but if there's, if there's any questions about rebooting, again, you shouldn't have to do that. If you're, if you're doing it often, that's, you're doing it wrong or there's a, something wrong with your device and maybe you should uh, check with support. Okay, so that takes care of rebooting. Again, green light is the key to that. If you're on a green light, you shouldn't need to reboot at all. Okay, uh, variability. Um, variability is the next point that I wanted to talk through in that in your earnings, there are going to be peaks and valleys. That is natural. So again, when I was talking about that 50% barrier, that's something that at least I've observed uh, of late that's like, ooh, I start getting curious at 50%. Um, you just need to understand that there are natural peaks and valleys to this and what they've really recommended, the Helium folks have recommended, is watch your 7-day average and your 30-day average. Okay. One thing that will influence this in the future is consensus uh, as it moves off, off the actual hotspots and onto these uh, other devices, um, then it should speed up the network such that your earnings will be a little bit more predictable. But for right now, understand that the, the variability is in there and it's expected. Um, on that, um, there, there was something else I was gonna say on that, but uh, it escaped me, so I'll continue moving on. Um, okay, one thing that, so this is the asterisk part that I've talked about uh, since the beginning. Whenever I've given you 10 helium tokens for the uh, for the lone wolf to the 600 and some I was making uh, with my other hotspot. Okay, all that comes with an asterisk. And that, what that means is that there is a fixed amount of helium tokens being distributed uh, to reward hotspot owners. Okay. As the network grows, 
that total will come down. So roughly speaking, we had, I, I think I showed uh, 17,500 hotspots currently on the network. I'm sure by the time you watch this video, you'll be like, wow, that was so small. But um, think about it, every time it doubles in size, then there's half the amount of helium tokens available, okay? So just for a, a rough uh, figure is let's say that a hundred, there's a hundred helium tokens that were minted uh, per month for all hotspots on the network. And then next month, the, the network doubled in size. So then 50 helium tokens would be distributed to all hotspots. Make sense? Hopefully. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. We'll, we'll get them answered. But in general, you will see that as the network grows, those helium, number of helium tokens earned will be lower. As, as it grows. I've already noticed it in my earnings as the growth of the network has started back up from that 600 uh, per month total. So keep that in mind. Again, watch your seven day averages, your 30 day averages, okay? That will give you the most information as to how much it's expected to decline versus what is not expected and which gets you into the sad face mode. Check your physical setup. Are your cables attached? Did they come unplugged? Did something get, uh, did, you, did you change your, your wireless password? Those things are so easy and can and frustrate your, you as you, as you look, work through your earnings. You know, you go back, did I, do I have a green light? Is it synced? Okay, that kind of muscle that you can build to check those things will help you when this question comes to your mind. All right, lastly, uh, talking about weather. That's the one of the things that, that I, I was curious about. It's okay to ask questions and not know the answer, so then we research them. So uh, what I did for, uh, does weather affect my hotspot or my, my coverage? And so what I did was I looked at someone else in my neighborhood, okay? Looking at hotspots around me, that similar terrain, similar number of witnesses, that kind of stuff, to study what they were doing or, or what their earnings were. And if there was a, a uh, weather event that came through that that did they also experience lower earnings that day and was it percentage wise about the same if so well then great then 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 it's kind of on par with with everything else in the area okay i really recommend that you look in your neighborhood uh, via the Helium Explorer and seeing what other hotspots around you are making. Again, you want to look at similar witness counts, um, similar H&T totals that they're mining on that seven day average and the 30 day average. That can really help you to understand how am I performing against my peers or my neighbors in the Helium network. Okay, that's a huge bonus for looking at things like weather or, um, you know, uh, just any other events. Uh, and then go back to the, these discords as well. They can give you information as to what things are doing on the network. Maybe there's been some changes. I talked about consensus just a, a tiny bit. That can really um, change how um, hotspots are, especially lone wolves, operate. Because if you got consensus awarded with consensus on a lone wolf, you made a lot of helium tokens in in a very short amount of time. That's actually what happened to one of my hotspots. It's not expected. And also in the future, maybe perhaps by the time you watch this video, consensus won't even be a thing that we ever, ever see for most hotspot owners. So just keep that in mind. All right, so that takes care of it. So if I was to give you the very brief thing of why my earnings so low, check your green light, check your sinking. You might need a reboot, but probably not. If you're rebooting all the time, more likely something's wrong, okay? Check the Helium Explorer. That's your best bet to how your hotspot is doing and how others are doing around you. Keep in mind your neighbors, okay? Consider changes to elevation, your indoor uh, outdoor, if it's one of those two, if you want to make a move there, consider an antenna. Um, check the physical status of all of your connections and your internet stuff. Um, keep in mind, density is another one that can, can slip in and get you later. And we talked about variability. Again, the, there's natural peaks and valleys to this. 
have a criteria of which you start getting curious and start investigating, but don't freak out and go all sad face because more than likely it's doing what it's supposed to, but it helps to check in every once in a while, and especially on the Helium Explorer and see what your hotspot's doing. That's it for me. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Like, subscribe, share. Let's get the word out. There's a lot of cool stuff on Helium. The, also, the value in, in, of HNT is going up. It was down a little bit yesterday, but it's continued to go up. That's a great thing, too, for the network. Uh, thanks. Thanks for watching. And again, keep your, keep your questions coming. And I appreciate it. And I'll, I usually try and get back to them around Sundays is my usual time for, for reaching out to the network and seeing what everybody's up to. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. Take care.